Hey guys, so um, yeah, it's so awesome to have you here, JP and Melissa, um, to sort of join us for this conference uh, replacement or conference encouragement video. And so you guys just had some perspectives that we really appreciated from some different parts of the world. And so um, I'd just like to kick it off by giving you um, each a chance, starting with you, JP, to just sort of introduce yourself real briefly, um, where you're from and um, what ministry looks like for you in your context, um, kind of normally, and just kind of give us some background about you and yourself and maybe your family. So yeah, go ahead, JP. Okay. Um, my name is JP and I'm originally from Germany. I'm from the Southwest, but I live in Japan since 12 years and I'm married and I have two kids. They're up here and we live on the Island of Hokkaido. Uh, what we do, we're church planters. Uh, in the last 20 years, we helped to plant two churches. And three years ago, we moved as a family to, um, to a new location. It's a little town where there has never, ever been a church, like in 2000 years of history, not once. And we use um, surfing, snowboarding, skating, mountain biking to stay sane. And it's part of us and it's a great way to connect to people. And so three years, we are just building relationships, being friends eating people into the kingdom of God and just loving them. And yeah, maybe guys, you know, like Japan, it's like the heaven for powder and snowboarding. So it's amazing. But on the other hand, it's like spiritually really a dark country. Um, not many people have ever heard the name of Jesus and there's a lot of resistance. So yeah, that's us. And I'm 43 with two kids, eight and five boy and girl and happily married over to you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I th we'll post a, post a link to it, but the, our partners at Ride Nature took a trip out and made this really cool, um, really well done video of a visit with JP um, that must have been maybe a year ago, year, two years ago, JP? Three years already, maybe. It's, they, they made a cool uh, cool resource that we'll, we'll send out and you can sort of see some of the visuals of what his local context looked like. Cool, Melissa, do you wanna give us a little background on yourself? Sure. I'm Melissa Chastain. I live in Dillon, Colorado, and my family and I moved here seven years ago um, from Indiana, where I was a youth pastor. And during that time, God called me to Summit County to be a light. I had no idea uh, what that meant, except that he just wanted me to come and love people in Summit County and just be a light example and then a few months after that calling, I was connected through a video of SFC and realized there were others like me with that calling. So God brought our family here seven years ago. We're going on our eighth winter. And my husband, Don, and I have three kids. Um, our son, Drew, is 22. He's in the Marine Corps. He just promoted to sergeant and just married his high school sweetheart, Autumn. And our daughter, Emily, is a sophomore in college and actively involved in SFC. And our youngest son, Evan, is a junior in high school. So our kids are young adults now, and it's a fun season. So we help serve at Copper Mountain Community Church as pastors, cookie makers, cookie deliverers, whatever is needed, along with Josh and Val Stock. And uh, we've been part of that church and we're actually going through a big transition right now where we're going to start leading um, as Karen and Stinky um, leave to go to Colorado Springs to do more ministry. So um, also involved with SFC Summit and SFC Girls that just got relaunched and so super pumped about that. And then also my husband and I, just with hospitality and our home and just the playground around us, also have a play ministry where we just really feel uh, people's hearts and minds get refreshed by playing outside and connect with God at a deeper level. And so um, we just play a lot. And so that's kind of what we do. And being 44, I feel like I'm kind of in an awkward, weird, awesome position. I kind of feel like a connector between 20-year-old snowboarders and 70-year-old skiers because that's the team that I lead at Copper through the ambassadors. And then I also feel like a connector of skiers and snowboarders. We're a house divided, two skiers and three snowboarders. So 
I would definitely say I'm a connector with community and genders and ages and it's awesome. That's awesome. Um, obviously, SFC's mission is to, to be a bridge, and it's um, it's cool to see the way that you live that out in so many different areas. Okay, we're going to go um, back over to you, JP. So um, one of the things we want to talk about is um, what this um, season with coronavirus has looked like for you. And um, I think we're just going to start with maybe just a short snippet on, um, on what's been hard. And so I don't think a lot of us probably even have some background on what um, your local context has looked like in um, Japan as far as COVID. So um, do you want to start with that? Has it been particularly hard? And what's that looked like for you? Um, yeah, the, the hardest part was like a, a soft lockdown and the kindergartens and the schools closed down. And so we had to homeschool our kids in Japanese for two and a half months. And that was crazy. Like the teachers would deliver the homework and you have the kids 24 seven. And then end of the week, the teacher comes, collects the homework and marks them. No, we had to mark them even. And like the whole, it's a bit like culture shock. The whole life has to rearrange um, the things we did normally. We couldn't do. There was a lot of uncertainty. And so we really, um, I think the stress level and how to manage the new circumstances that really made us um, very aware that we need like different plans. Like we can't white knuckle through that. We, we need more like self care and have to look after each other, have to look after the kids because they were isolated and officially they said, okay, they're not allowed to play with their friends. And that was just like a crazy situation. And it was winter. So praise the Lord, the ski resorts were open. They have been open. So we've been tons on the mountain and social distancing on the slopes and riding powder. That was really, yeah, a blessing that helped us to go through. And right now it's pretty normal again, but, um, two and a half, three months have been quite crazy. And it was with like no meetings and nothing. That was a weird situation. And to be honest, like, I, I don't know how you guys are, but sometimes if you, yeah, that they, they still made money. Like they, um, they were allowed to stay open. Yeah, but sometimes like if you don't have stuff scheduled that's the most crazy time like if you don't have anything in your notebook no meetings that's when yeah you have to deal with yourself and yeah yeah crazy and were the slopes less busy or more busy during that time there in your local ski resort i'm less busy like i'm no tourists so that made a huge difference like no overseas tourists and over the recent years um many people from china came in and like i would say like even the japanese um many people they they were too afraid to go skiing so it was super empty um empty chairs empty powder gotcha wow um melissa what um how did how did life fare for you guys in summit county i know that's another spot that people travel in from all over the world yeah especially being a tourist destination we were packed with tourists when COVID hit and actually it hit at keystone mountain and which is two miles from my house so when that weekend when they announced COVID outbreak there had been a little talk about COVID, uh, but my husband and i we went skiing on that saturday by sunday there was this talk about COVID and resorts may be shutting down. And then by Monday, everything was shut down at Copper. And so we had a quick last minute meeting as a staff for like one hour. And that was the end of it. We had to leave everything, our skis. We thought that it would only be like two or three weeks. And so my skis were left there, all my gear. I was concerned about what food I had left in my locker. Um, just because we had assumed we would be back. And our one of our best friends, Anna from Australia, was doing the LDP program here with Ryan Leeds. And she had to immediately go home. And all of our trips, plans, everything started to get canceled. And personally, I just got a little angry. I was confused. Um, my job literally just was stopped immediately. 
church stopped immediately. So it, it was really a challenge, kind of a low spot for me, um, just dealing with what to do when I love to have a plan, a schedule, and a calendar. Yeah, for sure. But um, I've noticed that um, people as resourceful um, and as dedicated as you two both have um, found um, some ways to sort of, I don't know, fight through it. And some of you, sometimes your ministry, the group you're ministering to or your context to change a little bit. What did ministry look like for you um, in, the, in the midst of that? Um, we'll start with you, Melissa. So our church, which consists of a core group of us who live here in Summit and then second homeowners primarily and then guests, the second homeowners and our core group started Zoom Church. And so that was fun to navigate what that looked like. Uh, we weren't really keen about doing a live Facebook live. Uh, and I think it was really good because we were able to talk to each other and look at each other face to face. And I know for me, that really helped when I was doing just a quick little five minute preaching or or what. So we connected that way. And then as a family, we just started to live it up in the kitchen. We started cooking more, spending time together. We had some really amazing conversations uh, because so many big things were happening in the world. And so our kitchen table became really an awesome place of conversation and community with our kids. And so that was really a blessing. That's awesome. And then um, what about you, JP? Was there anything sort of, you know, in the midst of it, any opportunities that you were able to find? Yeah. Um, so we were just like the last three years, really investing in the community, in the neighborhood, building friendships, building relationships. And suddenly um, no kindergarten, no school, but parents have to go to work. And so we offered to look after kids. So we had like our house, like every day kids came around and um, just cared for them, had a safe environment. And people were super thankful that, that we just could do that right now. And that opened so many doors and they appreciated so much. And then just like showing love, my, my wife loved to bake and, and to cook. So she baked a lot of stuff like cookies and cinnamon rolls. And, and even the people who were too afraid to meet, we just delivered stuff and a little Bible verse and, Hey, we love you. We're here. And actually the fun thing is like people had more time because all the, the um, sports clubs were canceled. All the meetings were canceled. So people really, yeah, they were open to talk over the fence and we had some like physical distance barbecuing in the winter. And so we had tons of chances to really speak about like the, yeah, the rock we have, like that um, no COVID can shake, like the hope we have in Christ. And even if we get sick, even if we get, if we, even if we die, we could like really testify and, and tell them like, hey, we have really Jesus who gives us like, this unshakable hope. And, and I think people really saw it. Like they saw the difference of like freaking out or just knowing, Hey, even if the worst hits, like we are safe in his hands and that really opened so many doors. And now we're just like following up what, what happened, like meeting up with people, starting Bible studies and people were really open to receive prayer for the first time because they came to their ends. Like a lot of families, they realized, hey, we're running away with like work, we're running away with like our lifestyle. But now we have to face like the real situation. And and like one mom just from around the corner said like, hey, I right now I only survive on like having um, yeah, alcohol like every day. And so we prayed for her and, and ministered to her and she really realized, wow, I, I need more. Like I can't, I like I'm at rock bottom right now. So it was, it was difficult, but it was a huge blessing for us. And really seeing God in the midst of all was just like amazing how he opened doors. Wow. Yeah, I um, have noticed for a lot of people on a kind of a theme I'm hearing from you and others, it's like we had noticed that our network went from, I don't know how far you can see in the camera, um, but it went from like, you know, this wide and, you know, maybe this deep with people and then it kind of forced us that it can't be wide, you can't be seeing that many people. And so it sort of went, it was this wide, but it was, you know, it was so much deeper. And I think it's kind of down in those deep levels of um, 
of life where you get to have um you know the the real the the real meat of it comes out and we get to share the hope that we have my neighbor um across the street his name is Irv his wife Sue passed away in January right from before kind of everything um kicked off and we've been able to get to know him in a, a really uh really deep way and he was sharing just that you know it's so you know I know that in this season I'm supposed to when I sort of lost maybe purpose and meaning and having um my wife and he's a believer but he's like I but I'm not I'm looking to scripture and I'm just not I know I'm supposed to be finding hope and fulfillment there, but it's hard right now. And just to be able to say that to your neighbor, like the guy across the street, it's like, oh man, that's so um, cool that he's felt like he's it was able to share that and to be able to speak life and hope into him. Um, and his and his season is has been awesome. And so, um, well, cool. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. And so here we are in fall, headed into the um, winter season. And what opportunities or what kind of gives you guys hope coming into um, coming into this season, Melissa? So we partner with Copper Mountain, the employee housing through um, food and free ski wax and snowboard wax. And so in the past, everything that we have done for the employees has focused around food. But with COVID, we are definitely dreaming and thinking of new ways. And so we are partnering with their HR to just help serve and be there for them in whatever capacity that doesn't include food. So when the employees do move in, helping with that, any events that they have, helping with that. We're also really looking at using our church building, which is on Copper property, as a community center. That was what the intent of the building was for when it was built. And so we're really dreaming about what that looks like to become a community center again for very small groups and focusing more on mental health more than ever. Uh, The Rocky Mountains are known as the suicide belt of America. And we in the ski and snowboard culture know that suicide rate and mental health and substance abuse is three times higher than anywhere, any other culture. And so anyways, we're just looking at ways where outside um, services can come into our building and offer help and support for those needs of any employees coming in. And especially coming in with a pandemic, there's going to be new signs and new things that are happening with PTSD and and just anxiety being higher than ever, and just living in a tension of not knowing what's next. So we, as a group at Copper Mountain Church and SFC Summit, we joke that we're on plan GG because we're we're just really dreaming and hoping and thinking of just totally different ways. And we're just asking God to just show us something new. And so we're just pressing in and and just asking him to just lead and guide us. And if it looks very, very simple this year, we know we're being obedient and we're just going to go with it. Awesome. Sounds great. JP, how's it looking for you? Yeah, it's totally different. Normally we uh, re- work with a lot of short-term teams coming in in winter, but close borders, nothing this winter. And so we really pray hard right now. So we use the time like we, we don't have big meetings right now. We, we don't do a lot of outreach, but we use it to pray and to really seek the Lord and also to um, prepare our hearts like with self-care. Like um, being missionary, we, we experienced culture shock and like living overseas with like we had a tsunami and a nuclear power plant melting down here in Japan. So we know that often after a pandemic or a crisis, things go down and you need time to really find your groove to come to a normal way of life, like where it's life is up and down normally. But um, so right now we're just like doing very little except meeting friends, praying and dreaming. Same with like Melissa. And we are really thinking the relationships we establish, like how can we bless the people really thinking very strategically, where are they on their spiritual journey? then where are the roadblocks? Um, What is hindering them to to move forward? And how can we come alongside and love them? And um, our 
dream is to get uh, five families with us on a snowboard ski retreat, a um, long weekend or even a week where we just spend time together and where they can experience um, the goodness of God, like where we just eat, celebrate, ski. And then um, what we do normally is like chronological Bible storytelling. So we tell a Bible story, like it's not me, the missionary, it's not me, the teacher. Hey, it's a story and let us all learn from this story. And a lot of people have trauma here and maybe same all over the world, like substance abuse or um, depression and, and mental health is an issue, but stories really connect to the heart of people. And so it's a bit like a trauma workshop using Bible stories to just get people talking, but also to get God's word in their hearts and minds. And so that's a dream for this winter, just like building on these relationships, low key, praying a lot, um, staying healthy, being good stewards of, of our family and of ourselves and trusting the Lord that he will just use it. And yeah, hopefully getting all the folks on, on a long trip, snowboarding. And it seems like tourists, we don't know if we have tourists, tourists or not. So, yeah. Well, um, well, so this is going to be distributed uh, pretty widely to really the global um, network of ski and snowboard ministry folks. If you had any closing words of encouragement, um, what would they be, Melissa? So I feel like the two things that we all have in common, regardless of where we live around the world, is we all love Jesus and we all have the calling to be the light. And especially for this season, wherever we live, a uh, Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, where, regardless of where we're at, uh, may we just be a light in the grocery store, in our homes, in our communities, on the hill, on a walk, wherever it may be, that we just really ask the Lord to just help us daily to just be a light. Amen. It's just like, yeah, I want to reflect that. and. And also like what we really think it's like abiding, like abide in Jesus, like um, we're the branches, he's the vine and have an IV drip of Jesus in your vein. That really makes a difference. Like that's the flavor people need. It's, it's Jesus in us. And so we have to feed ourselves with like tons of Jesus and, and honestly, like let's encourage each other. And I think that's a major challenge. Like we can't meet physically or we, have a lot of change, a lot of stress. So we need encouragement, just like virtual encouragement, text messages, whatever we can. Let's encourage each other to be lights on the hill and to be the flavor of Christ. Love that. Well, great. Well, um, how can we be praying for you, JP? Um, yeah, just for um, these connections we established over the last couple of months, like really pray for these people. Um, it's a spiritual battle. So if people don't pray, for breakthrough, nothing will happen. So pray for Japan, pray for our friends, pray for us that we're walking close with Jesus. And that's an amazing blessing. Like if people pray, I'm stoked. That's awesome. Melissa? I would say we're just in a big transition here at Copper Mountain Community Church, SFC Summit. And uh, just for God's guidance and wisdom as we go into this season, but also specifically with just our team as we're taking on uh, leadership roles and housing issues and, and just um, dreaming for the future of what the season looks like. And then for each of our families specifically. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being here and thanks for what you do both for the um, global uh, shred ministry community and what you do um, to serve your local communities. You're both a huge inspiration and it's been, um, it's been fun having you here. Thanks, Randy. Thanks for having us and come over to Japan. Like when the borders open, have some Japanese powder. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome, man. Let's do it. <laughs>